Today I'm going to go over a couple of the common questions that I get about the dual TBX-10A powered sub, as well as show you how to connect it to a standard everyday receiver. Absolutely no time to lollygag, let's get right into it. All right, so one of the top questions that I had, and the first one that we're going to start off with is, is it good? Both meaning, is it good build quality, and how is the sound quality? Well, as far as build quality, I can definitely say that it's pretty stout, pretty good. I have, like, literally beat the crap out of this thing for over a year and a half, and um, I haven't had really any problems with it, except for about nine months in, it started cutting in and out a little bit. But I figured that out pretty quick, and that was just a ground issue. The materials definitely seem well made, even though it's not, you know, the thickest box in the world. I don't think it really has to be. It only pushes about 110 watts, so the uh, half inch, I don't know, a little bit over 3 8 uh, MDF board is just fine for it. Stick around for later, and uh, I'm going to take this plate off, which actually connects to the amplifier. Well, that's actually where the amplifier resides. Um, this plate is aluminum, and it actually acts as a heat sink, so... As far as the sound quality, I think it sounds really good, actually. It has a 50 to 250 hertz crossover, so, I mean, it can kind of push a little bit of the higher bass, and it doesn't really dig too low, but with its size and the fact that it's sealed, I think that's just fine. The other thing that it has is it has a 0 to 12 dB bass EQ, which I think is kind of just a bass boost, but um, it actually helps it out tremendously does also have a phase switch for 0 or 180 and then uh, you have a power and you have a protect LED. 15 amp fuse it comes with which again it doesn't need any more than that. Now the connector is another thing I wanted to talk about. Actually I had a comment or a couple comments of people asking me what gauge or what wire size I was running uh, which is actually 5 gauge which is kind of a weird I got it in one of them skosh kits from Walmart but uh, it might be a little bit overkill for this amplifier but I think at that point you know I don't really think it's too much what you don't want to do is you don't want to have too little of a gauge and which is actually kind of funny because these are either a 12 or a 10 gauge which is pretty small I don't know if I would recommend running a 10 or a 12 gauge maybe do like an 8 another question I got is why does each of the leads have two well what that does is inside the amplifier each of these pins, basically with the same color leads, they connect inside. So basically all this is for is for daisy chaining uh, different amplifiers together. One can basically act as an in, the other one can basically act as an out. Um, what I did is I took and connected both of them, which you really don't have to do because, I mean, current is pretty much going to pick one or the other. Uh, Electricity is very lazy, so it's going to pick the path of least resistance. And even though I have both of them connected, it's not going to help the amplifier in any way. Another question that I got, which seemed may seem kind of silly to you, but, um, you know, we all, not all of us know, you know, what's going on, and we were all, you know, beginners at one point. So I got a question asking why there was no electricity or 12 volts on the blue wire. Well, what the blue wire is, is a remote. So pretty much if... On the basic, most easiest level, if you wanted to run your amplifier, you need a ground, you need a positive uh, 12 to 15 volts, and also you need your remote. Now what this does is it picks up a 12 volt signal from your radio. So basically when your radio turns on, it sends 12 volts to here, which is kind of a sense signal, which tells the amplifier to turn on. Now, to kind of get around that, if you don't have a remote wire, what I do and what I will do later, I'll show you, is basically just jump your blue and your red together. Yep, so basically connect the blue one and the red one. So another question about the wiring harness I got was, why does it have two RCAs? Um, most amps do have two RCAs, even though it is a mono amplifier. Um, what a lot of mono amps do is they will take the right and the left and actually bridge them internally. So this is a left channel and a right channel coming from your output of uh, whatever amplifier you're using or, you know, whatever type of head unit or, or it could be an amplifier or receiver. Stay tuned. So another question that I got, and this is something that I kind of wanted to talk about uh, with these, is so 
they're basically a truck design kind of you know compact a lot of people want to take these and put them under their seat which you got to really think like i'd said before this is the amplifier so if you put this under your seat and then you know maybe have like some old gym clothes or something up against this and uh you know the seats up heat rises um i had somebody contact me and say that you know they put it under their seat and that it keeps cutting out i'm gonna go ahead and imagine that uh it's getting hot because just for that reason kind of a victim of circumstance so definitely in my suggestion i would suggest to kind of leave these out in the open as much as you can and if you do have to put them like under a seat maybe make sure that this side with the plate is you know kind of closer to somewhere that's going to get more free air as opposed to being you know maybe like up against uh the side of the vehicle or you know underneath the rail that holds uh the seat on or somewhere that's going to get you know french fries and yeah. everything just kind of caught here uh yeah it's gonna it's gonna get it hot speaking of hot do you guys want to see something disgusting Oh, yeah, that's a burn from a Cadillac tick converter. Be safe out there, guys. So I don't know how well we're going to be able to see. Oh, yeah, I don't feel... I can't take that off of there. All right, so not the greatest view, but uh, it's a view. All right, so yeah, see, there's the inside. So going back to the uh, getting warm, you got to think the transistors are on top of this plate, and that plate obviously connects to this plate. So if this is laying, which obviously it's going to be laying on its back like this, um, yeah, the heat, it's not really going to work properly. You kind of want this to be higher, so that's another thing about laying it down. Uh, I didn't realize it was really set up like that. So yeah, my suggestion is definitely to stand them upright. And then like I said, leave this plate kind of in the open. And then while we're here, let's look at some of these cool pins. These were from Disney circa 1999. Oh, that's mini. Let's see, there's a one and then three nines, which is for $19.99. This one's pretty cool because I don't think Splash Mountain is there anymore. But yeah, these are just some uh, pins that we went through and we found of uh, the father-in-laws. This one is my favorite. It's the Cheshire Cat. Might not be a planet anymore, but he's still a nice puppy dog. So yeah. I cannot remember his name. Put it down in the comments if you remember. Just figured I'd show you guys these. Well, let's not forget to put these back in. Okay, so now the moment that I'm sure two or three of you have been waiting for, we're going to go ahead and hook this up via this, and we will talk more about power supplies to power this in a minute, but we're going to use my benchtop power supply for now, and I'm going to hook it up to this Yamaha HTR5730 that I've had for years. Now, the thing with doing this is... The easiest and best way is you need something with a subwoofer out. Now, the subwoofer out is only just a single RCA, but I have these splitters, which uh, actually makes one go to two. My power supply I have set at 13.4 volts, and it only goes up to 5 amps. But um, you'll see in a second, for what I'm using it for, it doesn't get anywhere near that. Basically, I just have a couple power leads that I keep down here and uh, they do have uh, these clips on them so I can just hook them straight up to this 
So basically what I'm going to do is, like I said before, we're going to hook our ground up to the black one, and then we're going to take the blue and the red, and we're going to connect those together, and then connect our positive to that, which that's going to turn on the amplifier. And then, seeing as we have a splitter for our RCAs, it doesn't matter which one goes into which, we will connect those. So uh, let's go ahead and actually connect the power and all of that first. Okay, so like I said, we don't really have much room. Try to get that over as much as I can. So basically, I know this looks kind of weird, just strictly for test purposes. And basically that's all you have to do. You have your power, your ground, and then your input. I'm sorry for bumping you. All right, so we'll go ahead. Uh, is this gonna flip? It does. Okay. So yeah, okay. Basically our remote is connected to that. Ground is connected to that. Make sure those two don't touch. And then our inputs are connected. Can't really see it, but the receiver is on. Okay, so with everything hooked up, we will go ahead, we'll turn on. Oh, yep. It runs about three watts, uh, 0.2 amps, so about a third of an amp idle, 13.4, that lets me know it's on. There's our power uh, LED, indicating that we are on. And, uh, okay, this is from the audio library. You're seeing it. All right, we're going to turn the output off. Turn it back on. Try something a little bit more familiar. Okay, so don't know if I mentioned, but I actually have the JBL Norridge. Uh, speakers, which we are using for the highs, they sound amazing in here. Um, and this really, man, this makes it sound so much better. So uh, back to the power supplies. Now, obviously I have this benchtop power supply, and this is actually a regulated power supply. And you don't really want to have a full-on regulated power supply when you're uh, doing audio because audio kind of demands more irregularity, uh, not something just so constant. So a couple of good things to actually power an amplifier like this or any you know type of car amplifier is an Xbox, the original uh, power pack for those, usually will give out a pretty good amount of amperage and uh, it is also the proper voltage. There are also power supplies that you can buy from the internet. Um, you can maybe find a power supply as long as it's anywhere from 12 to 15 or I think 16 volts is the top. Uh, usually the capacitors and everything that is inside anything that is going for 12 volt uh, will have like, you know, 16 volt capable components in it. Don't hold me to that. I know 15, you're good. Um, another thing is you can just get a battery, especially in a garage setting like this. Uh, get a battery and, uh, you know, maybe charge it every night or put it on a trickle charge. And uh, that should work pretty good as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So thank you guys so much for watching. If there's anything that I left out, any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please go ahead and feel free to hit the comments up. Uh, yeah, I definitely highly recommend the dual TBX 10A. It's, it's a very, very 
it's a quality product and uh duel is definitely not sponsoring me to say that so uh yeah good stuff but yeah once again thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one thanks guys <laughs>